Today we're going to go explore Port Orford. It's only about 30 miles north of Gold Beach and it's a little town that has a little bit of everything so let's go see what it's like. This beach here, just before you get into the town, it's really, really popular for surfing. The waves and just how everything comes in, it's perfect. So you'll see cars parked on the side of the road and that's everybody coming in with their surfboards, everybody enjoying. <laughs> and today it's a beautiful day too, so this is, this is perfect. Let me show you some of the people here surfing. Port Orford is not only the westernmost town in the continental U.S., but it's also the oldest town on the Oregon coast. So I've always wanted to bring the drone and, and fly around that rock, that sea stack, and give you a little, a little bit of perspective and just to get a, a good picture or video, but it's always windy. <laughs> and it was a little bit calmer earlier, but the wind just picked up and I don't think there's, there's no way I'm going to risk my drone on uh, just to get that for this shot. So instead of flying, I'm going to go hike it. Again, we go here with heights. It's not terrible, but my shoes are very slippery. <laughs> wow, it's windy, this is crazy. I found a, a grave marker up here on top. There's a grave for Summers. It was the last thing I expected to see, but now I'm gonna have to figure out who these people were. 
It's just kind of unexpected. Wow. The wind is crazy. The view from up here is amazing. This is gorgeous. It's a beautiful day too. Watch where I'm going. Made it. And now I'm starving, so let's go find a restaurant. There's a couple of, or what I hear, really good restaurants here. So and I've been watching a, a TV show, uh, The Vikings. I just watch every season back to back. And uh, so happens there's a Norwegian restaurant here. So let's go see what that's like. Crazy Norwegian was closed, but down here at the docks, there's a little restaurant that was pretty good. Nice, fresh seafood. A quick tidbit of information here too. I just found out that the, this dock is pretty special. There's only two in the US that use these hoists, these cranes, to protect the boats. Every day they lift them and lower them back into the water. There's only six docks that work this way in the world, and there's only two in the US. The, the other one is in in California, but it's crazy that they use these dollies and they move the, the boats in and out every day. I found this state park here and you can walk all the way over to the Cape Blanco Lighthouse, but it is way too windy today. This is crazy, but the beach is beautiful. The water has those two tones, the two colors, the turquoise and then the dark blue where the shelf drops. It's very, very pretty, but this wind is, is very strong. But wow, the, it's amazing to see the sea stacks out in the distance. So I came home and I started doing some digging. I wanted to find out who's buried in the, on top of that rock and why. And I came up with about four or five different stories. <laughs> it's basically the same story told from five different perspectives and they're all different. <laughs> I don't know which one to trust. It's, it's about in the 1850s, um, the government here, the country was giving away free land 
to white settlers. Uh, but the, the natives, the Indians that were here didn't like that because it was their land. And um, there was a big battle on that rock and that's why it's called Battle Rock. It was a very bloody and very deadly battle according to some of the stories. The sh there was a ship called the Seagull and they were traveling south and they let off nine uh, white men settlers to go and, and, and make peace and treaties with the natives here in, uh, in Port Orford. This is where the story gets a little wonky because there's a lot of versions, but what happened, what ended up happening was somebody didn't trust the natives, the natives didn't trust the white man, so they ended up going, going at it and it was a very bloody battle and one of the people that is buried there with his son and wife uh, he was one of the, the protectors of the rock. They were protecting their settlement. And uh, they, they were buried somewhere else, but they were moved and brought there to that rock to be buried where some of his friends died. It's interesting when you get so many different, different perspectives. <laughs> and I mean, it, again, like anything you find on the internet, you know, you take it for what it is. But these are accounts uh, from 150 years ago, 1850s. So it's very difficult to come up with, with what really happened. But that's it for now. I just wanted to give you that little bit of uh, information I was able to, to gather. And this is it. This is where we all started this morning. Thank you very much for watching this video. I had a great time exploring Port Orford. There's so much more to do. I just don't have a lot more time here at the coast, but thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please click the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you next time. Bye.